Hello, today we're going to be talking about chapter 4, probability. I'm going to post these um, lecture notes online and you can print them and take the notes as you're watching the video. Okay? So the probability of any event A occurring is denoted as P of A. That's the probability of A. And P of A is the number of times that A occurs divided by the total number of outcomes. So for example, if we have 100 beans in a jar, 70 red, 30 white, what is the probability of red? Well, how many red beans do we have in the jar? 70 out of the total number of beans. 100. So if I close my eyes and pick a bean at random, there's a 70 out of 100, or a 7 tenths chance, or a 70% chance, or a 0.7 chance that I'm going to get a red bean. You can write a probability as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. Either one is fine. Okay. What's the probability of getting a white bean? Well, there's 30 white beans out of 100, so you can write that as 3 tenths or 30% as 0.3. Okay. The complement of A, denoted as A bar, there's a, it's a bar on top of A, so we read that as A complement, is when A does not occur. The probability of A complement is 1 minus the probability of A if uh, I'm using decimal, if my probabilities are in terms of decimals, or you can write it as the probability of A complement is 100 minus the probability of A if I'm speaking in terms of percents. Let's look at an example. So I have a thousand M&Ms, and in this, uh, and I have certain numbers of different colors. What's the probability of getting a green M&M? Well, that's 178, because I have 178 green, divided by a thousand. Okay. So you can leave that as is, or you can convert it to a percent or decimal. What's the probability of not getting a green M&M? So that's not green. So that's 1 minus the probability of a green M&M. The probability of a green M&M we calculated as 178 out of 1,000. Okay. And then this 1 you can call it a thousand over a thousand. Any number over itself is one minus one seventy eight over a thousand gives me eight hundred and twenty two out of a thousand. So there's an eight hundred and twenty two out of a thousand chance of getting a green an M M&M that's not green. Or you could go through and add up the different numbers, like I could have added up the number of brown plus the number of red plus the number of yellow, plus the number of purple, and I still would have gotten 822. Okay? This, the, using the complement rule is much easier. What's the probability of not getting a brown M&M? That's 1 minus the probability of getting a brown M&M. What's the chance that you get a brown M&M? 212 out of 1,000. So that is uh, 788 out of 1,000. Okay. The addition rule, so the probability of A or B, so this is saying, what's the probability of getting A or B or both? 
this is called the inclusive or because I'm including the fact that I can get both at the same time. Okay, we write this as uh, in symbols, we write this as A or B. This or this symbol stands for or and it's called union. Okay, and it stands for or. The probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both. Okay. Where is this coming from? Let me uh, give you an example, or let me draw you a little picture, okay, to show you where this is coming from. Here is my set, here is A. So this is A and this is B, right? So if I counted and I want all of it, I want these two circles. So I look at A, so I look at the probability of A, and then I also look at the probability of B. But I've counted the middle part twice, so I gotta subtract it once. See, that's why I do minus the probability of both. Because I've counted this region twice, I gotta subtract it out once. Okay? So let's look at this example. Uh, what is the probability of getting a yellow or green M&M? That's the probability of yellow plus the probability of green minus the probability of both yellow and green. So the probability of getting a yellow M&M is 250. What's the probability of getting a green M&M? 178. And this is all over 1,000. What's the probability of both? So if I pick an M&M, what's the chance that it'll be both yellow and green? Well, there's no chance that it'll be both yellow and green. So that's zero. So this is 428 out of 1,000. So the chance that I, I close my eyes and the chance that I get either a yellow M&M or a green M&M is 428 out of 1,000. Okay. Let's look at another example. Okay. Um, let's suppose I survey 90 people, abbreviate people, okay, 60 of these people take math, 50, uh, 40 take English, so I know you're thinking, wait a second, how can 60 take math, 40 take English, that adds up to 100, but I only have 90 people. Well, the thing is I've counted twice because I have 15 people that are taking both. And then I have five that take neither. Okay. So I want to find the probability that somebody, I pick a person at random, what's the probability that that person takes math or English. Well, to do this kind of problem, I'm going to make myself a little table. All right. So let me move down some so I have some space. I'll just work right here. Um, let me work right here. Okay. So I have math and not math, English and not English. And I just want to make a little table. Okay. So 60 people take math. That's total 60 take math. 40 take English. So this is English. Total 40 take English. And I know I've surveyed 90 people. 15 take both. So 15 take both math and English. That's this cell right here. 5 take neither. That means 5 are not taking math. And they're also not taking English. So 
that's this cell right here. So this is not math, whoops, and not English. Now I can use this information and fill in the rest of the table. So 40 plus what gives me 90? 40 plus 50 gives me 90. 60 plus 30 gives me 90. 30 minus 5 is 25, which works out because 15 and 25 is 40. 50 minus 5 is 45 because 15 and 45 give me 60. So you can check these uh, numbers. Okay, so you fill in what you know in the table. Oops. Fill in what you know and then um, use subtraction to get the rest. Now, what's the probability that somebody takes math or English? That's the probability of math plus the probability of English minus the probability of both. Well, what's the probability of math? That's 60 people taking math. 60 out of 90. What's the probability of English? 40 people take English out of 90. Minus how many people take both? Uh, 15. So 60 plus 40 is 100 minus 15 is 85. So there's an 85 out of 90 chance that somebody takes math or English. So I guess for this problem I really did not need to make the table. But later you'll see examples where we do need to make the table. So if I want to ask something if I want to ask something like what's the probability that somebody takes math and they don't take English, then I would need the table for that. Okay? Let's look at uh, the properties of probability. So the impossible event has probability 0, so it can never happen. The certain event has probability 1. All events are between 0 and 1 inclusive. So probability of any event A is always between 0 and 1, and it can equal 0 or 1. And if you get weird kind of fractions, you can round them to three significant digits. So if I get like 0 0.035941, then you can just round that to 0 0.0359. Let us look at disjoint or mutually exclusive events. A and B are disjoint if they cannot occur at the same time. We already saw an example of this. For an example, you cannot get an M&M &M that's both yellow and green. Okay, These two events are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Okay. Complements are also disjoint or mutually exclusive because they cannot occur at the same time. Okay, Let's see what happens if they do occur at the same time. Okay, So if A and A complement happen together, A and A complement, this upside down U is the symbol for AND, and it means intersection. Okay. What's the chance that A and A complement happen together? Well, that's going to be zero, right? A and A complement can never happen together, so that's always going to be zero. What's the probability of A or, remember this is the symbol for or A complement. That's the probability of A plus the probability of A complement minus the probability of both. Here I'm just using the formula from above, the addition rule. What's the chance of both happening together? This is zero. 
So I get the probability of A and the probability of A complement, which is going to be 1. Why is this? Because either an event happens or it doesn't. So what's the chance that either A happens or it doesn't happen? Well, that's always 100%. That's always going to happen. So complements are disjoint. They cannot happen together. But what's the chance of one or the other happening? That's 100%. Okay. So conceptually, I want you to understand this. It's okay if the formulas are a little unclear. I'm not too concerned about you um, understanding the formulas. As long as you can apply them, that's what's important. Okay, two problems, like the M&M problem. Let's look at theoretical versus empirical probability. Okay, theoretical is the formula I gave you, the number of times that A occurs, divided by the total number of outcomes. Okay. An empirical probability is um, we do some kind of experiment or we make some kind of observations and we get the probability based on that. Okay. Let me give you an example. Okay. So if we have a fair coin. What's the theoretical probability? 50-50, right? So there's a 50% chance of heads and a 50% chance of coins. But if I have a thousand flips of the coin, am I going to get 50-50 or 500 heads and 500 tails? No, I might get something like 450 and 550, something like that. Okay. So this is the, when we're talking about coins and uh, cards, we use, we use theoretical probability. Even though we know that we're always not going to get 50-50, we assume 50-50, okay? But if I'm doing something like predicting the weather, what's the chance that it's going to rain tomorrow? Can I say, oh, 50%, 50-50, either it rains or it doesn't? No, for that we cannot use exp theoretical probability. We have to use empirical. So we base the weather on um, maybe some kind of weather models or we look at the um, satellite images, right? Or we look at the weather patterns. And then we can base the percent, uh, the chance of rain on these things, okay? So it's, it's an empirical probability that we use for the weather. Whereas for coins and for cards and problems that we'll see in class, we use theoretical probability. Let me give you an example of uh, drug testing. Actually, let me stop the video here. I don't want this video to become too long. So this is the conclusion of part one. Um, in part two, we'll continue with this. We'll do this drug testing example. Okay.